The Bill Lane Center for the American West has been a persistent force in exposing the complexity, breadth, and sheer beauty of the American West. Arts West, a program aimed at exploring the history and culture within this West, has held a year-long lecture series showcasing the diverse, rich, cultural world that exists and is emerging from this American West. Among these lectures has been the evasive bodies of May's photo studio, images from Chinatown, as well as Women Who Transformed Art in the West, a discussion centered on the promotion and recognition of Western women artists and their importance. Upcoming, Arts West is presenting Art and Culture on the U.S.-Mexico Border, 2,000 Miles of Imagination that Unite and Divide Us, a talk which will take place on May 18th. To prepare for this upcoming event, this short podcast will walk you through a few examples of emerging border art in order to better prepare you, as an audience member, for the programming. Let us begin. Before, however, diving into some of the art that I want to explore with you all today, Enrique Chagoya, Professor of Art and Art History at Stanford University, is going to offer us a brief glimpse of the history of the immigrant moving from Mexico to America and its continued relevance to the figure of the immigrant in America today. Hello, this is Enrique Chagoya. In a statement for the Symposium of Art and Culture on the U.S.-Mexico border at Stanford University. The history between Mexico and the U.S. regarding immigration is is old, uh, and it it starts with the U.S.-Mexican conflict in 1847. The early Mexicans, when the border changed and when Mexico lost at least half of its territory, uh, the Mexicans who were living on the Mexican side that became part of the United States, they became instant American citizens without immigrating to the United States. The early Mexicans did not come to this country. This country arrived to them. So that's one thing that tends to be forgotten in the contemporary xenophobic rhetoric against uh, Mexicans. The other thing that seems to be forgotten is that the early settlers of this country, the Spanish conquistadors and later the pilgrims and other immigrants from Europe, from 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 Holland, from France, Italy, etc. The early ones, though, uh, they came with no passports. They acted against the law of the land of hundreds of Native American cult- uh, Native American nations. So, from that perspective, the contemporary undocumented immigrants are not too different than the early settlers of this country. They are always a mix of people. Of course, there are some people that might be criminals, just like early settlers in this country that committed atrocities against humanity, let alone slavery that uh, was brought from Africa, and some indigenous people that also became slaves. But for the most part, the immigrants then and the immigrants today are people who are moving here to look for a better life. They risk their lives most often than not, and they are willing to do the best and provide the best, if not only for the, themselves, but for this country. And they contribute to the economy, to the culture, um, and life that enriches everybody. So for me, it creates diversity and it creates a wealth of culture for everybody. And should be seen more uh, in that regard rather than a threat. The the problem with uh, people not seeing each other as human beings, in which we are all part of the same human genome, it's always uh, a little hard to understand for me. We are the same human species, and therefore we should try to find bridges to live with each other and to understand each other better. Thank you. There is a phenomenon emerging from our particular place. It's occurring in the scant middle ground where two countries overlap, divided by a physical fence. This area, the U.S.-Mexico border, encompasses some 2,000 miles. It can be known as the borderlands, and the art emerging from, within, and around it, border art. The air is dry, 
the earth arid, the landscape composed of browns and beiges that offset a startlingly blue sky. A single solitary rust-colored fence runs across nowhere, it seems, beginning somewhere unknown and ending similarly. Standing starkly against the mute desert hues, however, is an enormous photograph of a child. Done in black and white, the child appears to lean over the lonely border fence, looking over at life on the other side. The piece, which has been highly covered by the American media, is by the French artist J.R. His pasting, which was constructed in Mexico and overlooks the border into America, is endearing and prompts the viewer to think about DACA and immigration more broadly as a human, real, inescapable issue, not only as a verbal political battle. Farther west, similar political discourse takes place through a different medium, color. Dividing Playas de Tijuana and San Diego's Borderfield State Park, the border fence meets the sea in a splashing of salty water on metal. Yet, no harsh rust-colored metal barrier greets the Pacific. Instead, as if a mirage, the wall reflects the dusk, a calm sea, a pastel river. Painted a pale blue, the fence all but disappears into a lingering night. This disappearance is a result of the efforts of artist Ana Teresa Fernandez in her project, Baranda La Frontera. Determined to erase the border, the artist used paint to make an ugly, brutish construction appear as the sky or the sea would. In taking the time to paint it, Fernandez further connects the symbol of the laboring, sensual female woman to the border itself. In attempting to dissolve the walls that divide, Fernandez not only tries to reconcile two split pieces of land, but also ideas of cleanliness and dirtiness, and of the past female image and role, and a contemporary one. A drifting, a grating, a cacophony of sound. For the border artist, music can carry as much value as paint, as a photograph. Reimagining the fence, not as a silent structure of division, but rather one of vocal, hopeful change, German symphony conductor Marcus Rint led his ensemble, Dresdner Sinfonaker, as well as several local Mexican bands, in a concert piece in which the musicians physically played the fence, turning the metal into an instrument. In a seeming echo of Ronald Reagan's request to Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down the Berlin Wall, Rint traveled to the U.S. Mexico border specifically on a tour he named Tear Down This Wall after Reagan's speech. Performing where the fence divides Tijuana and San Diego, the concert took place on the Mexican side of the border after the U.S. Border Patrol denied Rint permission to play on the American side, saying the act was, quote, too political. Despite this denial, however, Rint's musical vision wound its way through and round and within the metal, flooding ears and minds alike with the message that silence is not an option. Flitting left, right, left, right, center, up, down, and back again, a landscape blurs between pixels. In an aerial display of geometric chaos, browns, grays, greens fly across the screen. Image after digitized image of a lone fence, a mechanized snake running straight across the deserts of America and Mexico alike, cascade by. The piece is short, a matter of minutes only, as if a jigsaw of political discourse translated into imagery, the short film, Best of Luck with the Wall, by director Josh Begley, paced together 200,000 satellite images of the physical U.S.-Mexico border. All downloaded from Google Maps, the film is eerie, a stitched-up surgery of continuous footage of a single, ever-present, inanimate object. As the title suggests, Begley's work presses the viewer with a physical reality of the immensity of our borderlands, and then snidely says, good luck with construction. A textile hangs, vibrant and richly hued, yet stitched into the fabric lies something more, 
swimming within the manicured reds and blues and greens of the human history, a memory, an identity that must be remembered. Using textiles as a platform to partake in memory preservation, Mexican artist Guillermo Bert encodes immigrant stories into the textiles he constructs in his series, Encoded Textile Project. By weaving QR codes into the textiles themselves, he brings to life stories of immigrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border and other spaces in both a physical and digital format. His tapestries are currently on display in two Pacific Standard Time LA-LA exhibitions, the U.S.-Mexico Place, Imagination, and Possibility at the Craft and Folk Art Museum and Mundos Alternos, Art and Science Fiction in the Americas at UCR Arts Block. All five of these art pieces, be they photographic pastings, painted fences, be they a metal musicality or a cross-stitched video imagery or encoded textile, are products of the emerging art scene growing from and within the fertile cultural lands of the U.S.-Mexico border. As such, this art is of importance on a visual, aesthetic, and tonal level, but more so, it holds the power to prompt political action, thought, and discourse. The artists who make such work, as people cognizant of this power, of the significance of their time, and most of all, of their place, reflect a strength of spirit and unity which continually astounds. Work like these pieces, as well as a continued discussion on what this borderland art means and can mean for us and our collective future, will be the subject of discussion in the upcoming Bill Lane Center for the American West, Arts